Most Canadians don't know that alcohol causes cancer. It's a carcinogen up there with tobacco and asbestos. There are thousands of studies that point to the cancer risk. And yet, there are no warning labels like the ones you see on cigarettes, at least not yet. But the pressure is building to make cancer warning labels on alcohol mandatory, because you have a right to know. There's a lot to unpack, so let's start with the latest catalyst to this, Canada's new expected drinking guidance. The old guidance suggested no more than 15 drinks a week for men and 10 for women. The new advice? Any more than two drinks a week is risky. Three to six drinks a week increases the risk of developing certain cancers. More than seven drinks a week also increases your risk of heart disease and stroke. The danger goes up with every additional drink. Why the drastic change in guidance? Well, it changed because we have better evidence. So last time we did the guidelines, it was in 2011. In 10 years, there's definitely been significant improvements in our understanding of mortality and morbidity associated with alcohol use. We have much better understanding of the link between alcohol and cancer. We are recommending for people to become aware of those facts. Those Catherine facts Paradis is with the Canadian Centre on Substance Use and Addiction. She says the evidence is clear, and it's why health warning labels are necessary to help inform Canadians. People should assess their personal risk. Paradis co-chaired the scientific panel behind the new advice. These experts reviewed nearly 6,000 studies that link alcohol with cancer. But Paradis says most Canadians aren't aware of the danger. They don't know about certain risks. For example, the alcohol and cancer, they don't know. Then there are some facts that they think they know, but it's just plain wrong. For example, that alcohol would protect you from certain heart disease. That is no longer accurate. You know, the most recent studies show that's not true. That's where labels come in. Ones that tell you how many drinks are in a container so you can keep track of how much you're drinking. And labels with health risks like cancer so you know why drinking less is better. And experts want all that information right where you can see it. Standard drink labeling are necessary because people need to be able to count their drink. They need consistent, easy to use information at the point of pour. Labels about the health risk, warning labels, will allow to provide people with that rational as to why they should follow the guidance. If labeling appears on containers, it will really support people making those decisions um, a little bit easier. Because most people have no idea. Most people have no idea, no. So that does kind of tie into... The push for labels is based on research led by Canada. Erin Hoban is a senior scientist with Public Health Ontario. She ran one of the only real-world experiments of alcohol warning labels in Yukon in 2017. These labels were used in two government-owned liquor stores for a month. So what we learned from that study was that the cancer warning grabbed consumer attention, they read the cancer warning very closely, they thought about that message, they talked to their neighbours and their friends about that message. People not only talked about the warnings, Hoban says, they drank less too. Exposing people to cancer warnings on alcohol containers actually is associated with a 7% reduction in per capita alcohol use compared to sites that uh, were not exposed to the alcohol warning labels. The Yukon cancer label study was cut short because the alcohol industry intervened and the Yukon government couldn't afford a potential legal battle. We asked the industry where they stand on cancer warning labels now. Wine Growers Canada, Beer Canada and Spirits Canada replied with statements focusing on drinking responsibly and in moderation. Wine Growers Canada added it doesn't believe health warning labels are the best way to educate consumers, while Beer Canada says it remains open to labeling suggestions that prove helpful in reducing harmful drinking. But experts say the industry actually has a legal duty to clearly inform you of any risks, especially when those risks are not well known. So how critical are warning labels on alcohol containers to inform consumers? They are not just critical, they are required under the law currently. I think that there is no excuse that they're not there. If we're going to enjoy this, then we ought to be aware of the risk. And I love going for beer. This is not saying don't drink beer. Jacob Shelley is a law professor at Western University in London, Ontario, who has worked on alcohol policy. This is not about prohibition. This is about 
being aware of the risks and making informed decisions. He often talks to his students about the harmful effects of alcohol and says the obligation to inform is higher when a product is ingested. I'm not surprised that the alcohol industry has opposed that kind of warning because there's money to be made by increasing consumption. And so the more consumers uh, actually purchase, the more money they make. So there's a, there's, a, there's a conflict on their part to provide that information. But legally, they're required. If the industry is not compelled to do it and it's not in their interest to do it, who is responsible for getting them on the containers? At a minimum, we should expect governments to be doing this, right? We have governments regulating all sorts of products to ensure they're safe, from baby cribs to cars, right? And so the government really ought to be more involved in, in requiring these types of labels and can justify that requirement by saying that this is an obligation that manufacturers already have. We reached out to Health Canada. The agency responded with a statement. Health Canada says it recognizes alcohol use presents a significant public health and safety issue, adding it will review the new guidance and any recommendations. But the political pressure is heating up because once again, it comes back to you having the right to know. Somebody said to me just this morning, I did not know that alcohol was a class one carcinogen. And you know what, I think I'm gonna second guess that second drink next time around as a result. So Lisa Marie Barron is a new Democrat MP. We caught up with her last fall in Nanaimo, British Columbia. I just want people to have the information so that they're not going, I didn't have that information, that I should have had access. She met with her constituents to discuss a motion she put forward in the House of Commons last summer, calling for a national warning label strategy. So this is not about placing judgment on alcohol consumption. Barron used this to work in addictions and has seen how harmful the effects can be. In your perspective, how critical is it that Canadians understand the risks involved with drinking? I mean, it's, it's life-saving information for people to uh, be able to have. She wants Ottawa, not the industry, to dictate what Canadians know. Right now, it's left with industry to decide what Canadians uh, should or shouldn't know on the bottles. And so I'm trying to turn that around and say it's federal responsibility to ensure that Canadians have this information. And here's one tool for us to be able to get that moving forward. And the pressure is heating up on another political front, too. Senator Patrick Brazo is pushing for labels as well, this time in the Senate. So I rise today to propose a modest but essential amendment to the Food and Drugs Act to require honest labeling, a cancer warning on alcohol products. He's also urging the government to act on cancer warning labels, and it's deeply personal. I know what it is when people hurt, and I know that alcohol causes a lot of hurt, and this is just my way of, uh, of trying to give back, and, uh, and that's all it is. Brazo says his own experience with addiction was devastating. He and his team say Canadians have a right to know that drinking can be dangerous to your health. Why do you think it's so important that the federal government take the lead on this? Well, obviously, you know, it's, it's a health issue that, uh, that affects all Canadians. And now it's up to the federal government to, to be bold, to, to take a, a strong stance and to, take the, to have moral courage and to say exactly that alcohol causes cancer to all Canadians so they can make... Uh, better informed decisions for themselves. Okay, so this was the industry resistance. Oh, okay, there it is. The Brazo was, knows what he's up against and says no matter how big the opposition, he's not backing down. I know that this is going to be a tough fight. Uh, it may take months and may take even years and it may take uh, different prime ministers. I don't know, but we need to start having that debate. Uh, and, uh, and I know that the industry is very uh, powerful, but, uh, you know, this is a, it's not a fight against the industry. It's a fight against cancer, and this is a fight that I'm willing to take on. So that word, cancer, it, it's terrifying. And I'm wondering, how likely is it that someone who drinks will then get cancer? It's a good question, and we asked all the experts, and there's no easy answer because there are a lot of factors that come into play with cancer, hereditary factors, lifestyle, age. Alcohol is a risk factor that you can control, though, and that's the message that experts want to put out, that there is no safe amount, and it really just comes down to an individual's tolerance for risk. The labels come in to inform Canadians about those risks so that they can make informed decisions about their health. If the science is so cured, though, why the lag? 
A big part of it is that alcohol is so normalized in our culture. 80% of Canadians drink, and many might still believe there are health benefits to drinking. That's been debunked. Politically, too, it might feel like an unpopular choice, but a survey from the Canadian Cancer Society done recently found 8 out of 10 Canadians would actually support warning labels on alcohol. All right, Joanna, thank you.